You may have seen scuds at a fish club auction. They're tiny little critters that people feed to their fish. True, they're good fish food, but they're also really interesting animals. There are hundreds of different kinds in fresh salt and brackish water, even on land. Most are tiny, but there's even a supergiant scud. Scientists also study scuds to learn about our environment. In this video, I'll give you a complete rundown on scuds and tell you how to start a freshwater scud culture. I'm Bob, and this is Sonny's Fish Room. I got my scuds by accident. I noticed something moving in the java moss in one of my tanks. Tiny, shrimp-like animals. They probably hitchhiked in on plants I bought at an aquarium club auction. I was curious about them. I moved them into a container of their own and did some research. I found out that scuds are crustaceans, like shrimp, crabs, and lobsters. They belong to their own taxonomic order called amphipods. Amphipod means two feet. The name refers to the two different types of feet that amphipods have, called pleopods and uropods. Amphipods also brood their young in a pouch. Unlike lots of other crustaceans, the young don't have a larval stage. They look like tiny versions of the adults. Amphipods are found all over the world, in the Americas, Europe, Asia, and Australia, in the oceans, in the far north, and the far south, even off the coast of Antarctica. Some even live on land, like the European beach scud, Talatra saltator. Another species lives in a crowded American city. Stygobromus hayi, the haze spring amphipod, is an endangered species found only in Rock Creek Park in the center of Washington, D.C. This amphipod is adapted to life in seepage springs, swampy areas where groundwater sometimes spills out onto the surface. Ecologists Matthew Niemiller and colleagues at the University of Illinois isolated DNA from the seepage water to survey the amphipods. The method allows researchers to keep track of the rare animals without having to sacrifice them to extract their DNA, which is needed to distinguish them from other amphipods in the area. Supergiant amphipods have been found in the deepest parts of the ocean. In 2012, Dr. Alan Jameson, then of the University of Aberdeen's Ocean Lab, led an expedition to the Kermadec Trench, a deep ocean region north of New Zealand. The researchers lowered traps four miles, six kilometers, down into the trench. The traps pulled in seven amphipods, the largest of which was 11 inches, 28 centimeters long. The researchers also captured this footage of the species, Alicella gigantea, at a location more than a mile away. However, when the crew returned a week later, the amphipods had vanished and were nowhere to be found. In North America, Hyalella azteca and Gamaris fasciatus are two widespread species. They're probably the species kept most commonly by North American hobbyists. Hyalella azteca was discovered by science in 1858 in Veracruz, Mexico. It's found in fresh and brackish waters throughout North and Central America and the Caribbean. Hyalella azteca is probably not just a single species. It's thought to be a complex of very similar species, which science hasn't classified yet. According to Wikipedia, Hyalella azteca is a big part of the diet of a lot of waterfowl species, which the birds probably take in on the vegetation they eat. Scientists study Hyalella azteca for insights into environmental toxins. Because they live in bottom sediments, they accumulate contaminants in their tissues. Like a canary in a coal mine, they're indicators of the overall health of the environment. Gamaris fasciatus ranges from the Mississippi drainage to the Atlantic coast of North America. According to the Guide to Aquatic Invertebrates of the Upper Midwest, the way to tell Hyalella azteca and Gamaris fasciatus apart is that the Gamaris species has a flagellum, a hair-like structure at the far end of the third antenna segment and the hyalella don't. My scuds don't have this hair-like structure on their antennas, so I'm assuming they're hyalella azteca. In Europe, Gamaris pulex occurs from the British Isles west to the Volga River drainage, 
but is missing from Norway, parts of Scotland, and Ireland. For breeding, male scuds will hold on to females for days until the female molts. Scuds are easy enough to culture. They do well at room temperature with slow, steady aeration and not too much current. I use a sponge filter. Most freshwater scuds seem to like hard water. I add a little calcium chloride to their water every couple of weeks or so when I do a water change. I've been told by other hobbyists that they need calcium to form their shells. Be careful vacuuming their tanks. They're so tiny you can easily siphon them out. I siphon into a bucket so I can scoop up any I siphon out by accident. They are not fussy eaters. I feed mine a little Aquamax 100 or my homemade fish food. They'll also eat canned green beans and they really love bananas. Canadian researchers culturing one of their local Hyalella Azteca species for environmental studies fed their colony ground tetramin fish flake three times a week. It's not a good idea to keep scuds in a planted tank because they'll eat the plants. Charles Clapsaddle of the Goliad Farms Tropical Fish Hatchery in Goliad, Texas, feeds hornwort to his Hyalella Azteca. Charlie sometimes has scuds for sale, so if you're looking to start a colony, you might check his website. I've heard from other hobbyists that it's not a good idea to keep scuds with ornamental shrimp. They tell me the shrimps start to decline after a while. Some say it's because the scuds use up the calcium the shrimp need. Another hobbyist told me she saw scuds eat the eggs from under the female shrimp. If your scuds aren't breeding, you may not be giving them enough light. Most species in the hobby breed in the spring and summer when day lengths are longer. Researchers working with the Hyalella Azteca species found that they needed 12 to 16 hours of light to breed and didn't breed with 8 or less hours of light. If you liked this video, here's another one that you also might like. And it would really help me out if you could subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.